Anglo Gold Ashanti, Africa's biggest gold miner, beat forecasts by doubling its adjusted headline earnings for the first quarter to $492 million or 111 US cents a share. The 39% year on year growth in EBITDA to $800 million was slightly lower than the company had hoped for given the 22% average rise in the gold price during the period. The reason production dropped 6% year on year to 981,000 ounces as safety stoppages hit production in its South African mines which fell 24% on an annual basis. Samantha Loring spoke to the CEO Mark Itafani and asked if governments prepared to uh, budget on its strict safety regulations. I think the DMR has listened very carefully to some of the concerns we've raised both as an industry and as a company. I think we've got a good working relationship. We're working on a better protocol so that we uh, don't see the same amount of Section 54 stoppages. But again, I think we've got to acknowledge it's an appropriate tool for the DMR to use where they're not comfortable with what's happening on the safety front. Do you think this tighter regulation might have a positive effect on the sector? I hope so. I, I, I think they're really trying hard to deliver a, a, a hard message but also a constructive message. So I think the conversations that have come out of this have been constructive. It's up to all of us to make it work and, and improve safety and I think that's what they're all about, that's what we're all about. Average cash cost for the period was around $794 an ounce. Now that ticked up from the December quarter. Across your minds, uh, cash costs of course vary quite considerably up to $1,700 an ounce and then down to around $500 an ounce in other mines. Uh, take us through the mines where you're finding it most difficult to control costs. Well certainly South Africa has been the most challenging challenging in terms of input costs and obviously the impacts we've had on production. So I won't go there in terms of going back through that conversation, but we think the South African mines should be one to two hundred dollars an ounce lower than we are today and I think as we recover production we'll see a significant improvement. So I think that's the first thing. Um, some of the operations in, uh, for example, South uh, uh, Australia where we're at twelve hundred dollars an ounce, that's a function of actually transitioning from open cut to underground feed. So we knew there was going to be a couple of years where the costs were going to be a bit higher, but that'll come down. We hope by the end of the year we'll have taken $200 an ounce out of those costs and we'll be starting to process some deeper, high-grade underground material, which is really the future for the operation in the next 15 years. So we're transitioning, we're making changes. We've taken about 15% out of our costs across the, across the portfolio and we still think there's another 10 to 15% to improve over the next couple of years. So lots of things to do, but we have come a long way. What is your break-even gold price right now? Break-even break gold price for us, if you look at our total cost structures, is around somewhere between 11 and $1,200 an ounce. So still good margins, still doing very well. If you look at our cash margins of 52% and our total cost margins about 32, 33%. So we're doing very well. Returns are very strong. Cash flow generation is good. So we're still in a very strong position and certainly doing very well on an industry comparative basis. We've seen sharp falls in the gold price this year. It's sitting below $1,600 an ounce right now. So what is your position on hedging? Well, in our case, we got rid of our hedge book um, and it varied between two and three years ago. Big improvement in performance since then. We've improved our operations. We're growing our business. We've we've delivered the best turnaround in performance across the industry in the last four years and I'm talking about the global industry. We've got a global portfolio. We're one of the most competitive companies in the industry. There is no need for us to hedge. We want people to think when they think gold, they think Anglo Gold Ashanti. We believe the market for gold will be strong and that from our point of view we're not interested in hedging because we have a delivery or a business model that's delivering better than a 20% return to shareholders and we'll keep delivering. CapEx came in at $354 million this quarter. Just give us an idea of where you stand with regards to overall CapEx for the year and tell us about the progress on some of your growth projects, uh, Cripple Creek being one of them and of course the DRC a big focus area right now. Well, the good news is, um, from a from a um, capital perspective, we've we've had gr we'll be spending about 150 million dollars this year on exploration. Great news, three new discoveries, big pluses for the company, demonstrating that we have the best uh, exploration team in terms of results in the industry. Very thrilled uh, with what they've delivered. Uh, Cripple Creek, 557 million over the next three years to take it from around 250 to 60 to. 500 uh, to 400,000 ounces with the potential to go underground at some stage in the future. So some really interesting stuff there and good strategic moves. Kibali and uh, Mwangalu, the two projects in 
uh, the DRC have got the go ahead. $345 million for the DRC, uh, for Mogaloo, and uh, around $980 million for Kabali. Uh, we'll spend on a full year basis around $2.1, $2.2. .1, $2 .2 uh, billion dollars for the for the year, which means about 1.7 billion in the next three quarters. So uh, we've got an aggressive spend, but we're generating good cash. Uh, balance sheet very low, net debt 430 odd million dollars. So we're in good shape. The share price is down 30 percent in the past six months. What do you say to the investment community to restore confidence in the company? We've delivered industry-leading safety performance. We've reduced our environmental incidents by 80%. We've improved our cash flow and earnings from operations by 200%. We're delivering the highest capital returns in the industry. We have a portfolio that will grow the business 25 to 30% over the next two years. Our new exploration projects take us beyond 220. We're building our resources, we're building our reserves. We're continuing to deliver on a quarterly basis at some point in time the weight of cash, the weight of returns in terms of our competitors and being top of the league table in terms of the key metrics will attract investors for the right reasons.